Hey guys, this is Darius Vita, aka Komodo Dragon Jesus. I'm making a video for Poker VIP. What I'm going to be doing today is just playing four tables of 100 no limit, uh, trying to make the des best decisions possible and go from there. Um, I've already got four tables going, so let's just get right into it. If I have seven even with some good odds, I'm just going to click the fold button there. I, of course, as you guys can see, I'm using HUD while playing here. There's a lot of numbers on it. Uh, I'm not really going to get into too many specifics, uh, but if you guys want something general for reference, we got to the left of a player's name, we got their VPIP to the right is their raise first in, then underneath we have a few stats like a 3-bet percentage here, 4-bet percentage here. And, you know, hopefully, if I actually remember to do it all, I'll <laughs> make reference to what stats I'm looking at as I play. So for the moment, we're folding a few junky hands. 9-4 is a little looser than I'd want to open. The same for deuce 4 on the button in the top right. King-5 is basically an open that I will sometimes make, but spade is quite aggressive on the button, so I tighten up a little against him. I'm going to call ace-jack in position. We're playing four-handed here. I don't mind three-betting that at all, uh, but there's a player that may or may not be a weaker player in the small blind. So I want to let them in, let them join in on the action, have some fun. But now we get to the flop. It's three-way with the big blind as well. Uh, I can't say I quite hit it. So I'll very likely just be folding to a C-bet here, especially with no real, uh, no real nice back doors like a backdoor flush draw that would tempt me to click the call button here. And that's a nice hand in the big blind. All right. So essentially, no matter what, we're going to start this off with a raise. If the small blind folds, we're just going to 3-bet it to $8. Had the small blind raise, we're throwing in the uh, cold 4-bet there. To raise up a 5-4 suited. Okay, so we get an ace-king 3-board, which is typically, I believe, going to be pretty darn good for the raiser as opposed to the caller. Uh, that being said, I, I don't know much about this guy. I think he could potentially be like a casual player, so I'm not really going to go too deeply into like board advantage stuff here. I'm just going to see bet my gut shot uh, using a small sizing. I think on this board, uh, my sizing is not really going to matter. He has an ace, he's going to call a wide variety of sizings. He, if he has a king, he's going to call a wide variety of sizings as well. So basically, if we're trying to exploit someone that's not really paying attention there and their calling range isn't really going to change based on our bet sizing, then might as well just bet small uh, with the five high draw. So I think I clicked, what, 51% of pot there. I don't think I'd really want to go smaller. Uh, I think you can get away with going smaller, which is really cool, but occasionally going smaller just causes people to... You know, d decide that you really can't be doing this with a value hand and, you know, they'll start to float you really lightly, which they should against a very small bet, or they'll start to just, like, do little spaz raises against you. And without any history uh, against the guy, I think I'd prefer to just go half pod there.
ace queen will be a three bet. I'm gonna take a peek at how often Spade Valet actually four bets here, and he's got an overall range of four betting of 6.4% out of the cutoff. Um, which actually isn't the craziest thing in the world. I think if you four bets me, you just click the call button. I actually did expect it to be a little looser. I have quite a bit of history with the guy. Maybe he does it looser against me, who knows. Either way, queen seven, that's a fold. Got a new player buying in for 80 bucks here. Love to see that. If you guys hear some creaking in the background during this video, that may or may not be my chair. Uh, sorry about that, guys. I might need some WD-40 or something like that. I'm gonna click the fold button a few times. Queen six is off suit, right? Yeah. Let's fold that one as well. It's a very small thing, but if I'm actually like paying attention to it today, I really should not just be like auto folding when I'm in the blinds. I think doing that encourages uh, players to just steal your blinds a little wider than they typically would. But I mean, that's another thing. Once again, you know, if they're paying attention. Okay, so interestingly enough, Seducer decides to start off with a check over here. Uh, there's absolutely merit in betting to uh, essentially protect our hand from overcards here. But I, I really don't think that this is the board texture that a lot of players are going to be check folding. And if they're going to be check folding here, it might just be hands such as... Uh, you know, maybe deuces uh, don't want to go to, for a C bet, just try to get it to showdown here. And if against that plan, you know, we'll win at showdown anyways. And facing the, the turn bet, I'm just going to click fold. We've got, what was that, fourth pair. With the queen seven in the top left, I see bad flop on the ace high board. Uh, it's not the wettest board in the world, so I would expect quite a few folds. Uh, but once called, I think we're uh, we're not doing very well with the continued barrel, especially with no equity. Pocket fours, there's no way see bet's going to be profitable on this connected of a board. This is one I'm just going to try to take to showdown. If uh, Oakland 82 here throws in a bet at any time, he's going to take it unless there's a four on the river. There are going to be bluffs that I want to take on that board, but uh, pocket fours are not one of them. Just fold in a few junky hands here. Nine four is not part of my opening range preflop. Occasionally it could be. There, there's some opponents that I will be raising with any two cards against them preflop blind versus blind essentially because they fold too much. And interestingly enough, Spade Valet is one of them, but I chose not to raise it. And basically the reason behind that is uh, he does, at least from what I've seen, he overfolds his big blind. Uh, 
but we, we got a bit of history and he does not overfold it against me. If anything, he just like three bets like 40% against me, which obviously is not very pleasant when you've got a 9-4 suited. Have the option of squeezing or uh, just calling with the 6-5. I think we're getting way too good of odds to fold. I'm gonna choose to call this one. We flop bottom pair, that's not really what you're looking for when you call with a little suited connector like this. And we also get a lead out from the small blind. This is a player I know absolutely nothing about with two players left to act and bottom pair no kicker. There's no way I can call here. But I'm gonna be paying attention to this guy. You know, I'm, I'm curious to see what he leads here with because it could be a variety of things. Could be some top pair, could be some air, could be a draw. He could have two pair sets. And if we get to showdown, then we essentially, you know, we, we get a little information about this guy and you know, I like to take notes, we'll take a note on it and see how it goes. I've noticed a trend lately that people are just making these really large three bets and sevens might be close there. I decide to fold it because when people are making the large bets, you're allowed to fold more. Uh, it was probably close. We got a very small bet coming out from Mr. Han King. Uh, I'm looking forward to playing with this guy. He doesn't seem to be very good. I flop bottom pair, which is, you know, it, it's actually not bad. Bottom pair is not bad, but facing a pot size bet on the flop, I think it's a fold. So I'm leaving this table. It's, you know, essentially breaking apart. I got another one going on the side here. I'll just slide in. Guys, if you're wondering about my color coding system, um, it's pretty much dark blue is a reg. So this table I brought in is actually pretty atrocious. It's just gonna be a bunch of regs fighting over a bit of variance here. But for the sake of the video, we'll stick around. We'll have a little fun with it. Got history with a few of these regs so we can have some fun. Uh, and this lighter blue is the potential recreational players, casual players, uh, stuff like that, the players we really want to get onto the tables with. I find this a little bit of an odd lead from, uh, from Bust over here. The six paired, I really don't think this is going to be a off very often. Uh, that being combined with the fact that I basically have nothing, I think that'll make it a fold. And hey there, we got a set. Uh, I'm just gonna start betting the set for value. We're gonna go three quarters pot on the flop. Hope that uh, Brenty has some sort of a check calling or check raising range. And on the bottom right, we've got a limper. We want to isolate the limper. We're going to go three blinds plus one for his limp. Our isolation doesn't quite work out because the big blind decides to come along. And actually, he folds. So uh, if, we're trying to, if we're trying to isolate him, that did not work well at all. And then we get this flop that I really don't think I have a lot of fold equity on. A lot of the big blinds uh, calling range will be broadways. So I think I can check this one back. If he checks to me a second time on uh, blank, obviously this is a good turn. I hit the ace right on. Uh, I think I can very likely go for a, can, a delayed C bet, but I guess that's not the case. And now I have the option. I have the option to bet and I believe I'm gonna take it. 
I briefly thought about checking back because if he's paying attention, he can uh, check raise me quite aggressively here, uh, knowing that I'll essentially never have King Jack, knowing that I'll very rarely have two pair. Uh, because ace queen isn't re really going to be in my range. That being said, you know, ace 10 and ace 7 can be. And I'll almost never have a set or pocket aces for top set. Uh, so it's, it's really a spot where I, I can have some fairly strong hands. I can have some strong medium strength hands like top pair and some two pair, but I really can't have anything nutted. Which is, you know, unfortunate when throwing in a bet and... If he was paying attention, he probably could have punished me for it. And then you get into a little bit of a scenario, well, okay, my range is capped, so he might be check-raising me really light, uh, but you know, I still have a fairly strong hand here, so because I know he can check-raise me light, then I call down a bit lighter, and it can get into a, a messy situation pretty quickly. Um, if, you, if you don't know your opponent very well, we got a 4-bet coming out of Alex Black who has a fairly tight 4-betting range on the button, uh, but we're getting good odds here with ace-jack, so I think I click the call button. We flop a flush draw, that's really nice. I will very likely be starting off with a check call. On the flop, I don't think this board is really, it's not a board I'm going to have a value-raising range on. Like, even if I have, like, ace-queen here, I'm not going to be check-raising it, so it doesn't really make sense to check-raise my bluffs as well. Or sorry, it doesn't make sense to check call all my value hands and check raise my bluffs. So let's call four. We can potentially be drawing dead against pocket queens. I don't think that's an extraordinarily large concern. And Alex Black decides to take a little bit of an interesting sizing here because he basically doesn't really leave anything behind. I guess there's 44 behind, but he's he's committing himself to the pot with a lot of hands. Uh, so I'm not going to be raising. What kind of odds am I getting? I'm getting like 3 to 1. I think that's actually, that's, that's actually a nice bet sizing by him against a lot of my draws. I feel dirty about it, but I think I'm going to fold here. Because I, I think to make that a profitable call, well, first of all, I, I don't think he's bluffing that turn um, very often. I think he's going to be value heavy there. And also, I, I basically have to get his entire stack every single time I hit the flush. And, you know, we, we can never be behind a full house. Uh, to really to get profit there. You have four bet very quickly, guys. Sevens is not in my four bet defense range here, and he also did it very quickly. Which I love when people do things quickly because well, it's not often a bluff. It's a nice little timing tell to go by on some people. Throw this on the side a little. Okay, so God Nuts goes for the call pre-flop, and I was just pulling up his 3-bet stack because he actually is quite liberal with his 3-bets uh, button against cutoff. Uh, so that should help me narrow down his range a little bit. Uh, and I actually think this is going to be a fairly good flop for me to see bet uh, even though I have air. We're going to start with $4 into seven sixteen. And I was actually expecting a large part of his range to fold on the flop, um, mainly consisting of a heck of a lot of medium pairs, 
some suited connectors as well. When, when Once you get a call on this, uh, this King Queen Deuce, his range is just so heavily weighted to either a King Queen or a set of Deuces here. Um, or even something like Jack 10, which is a strong draw that's not going to be folding turn. So this is another spot where we just fire the flop and unimproved on the turn when his range gets so much stronger by calling the flop there. Uh, I think we just go for the check fold plan. Although if I was looking at my HUD and, you know, if I was looking very closely, I would notice that Got Nuts 999 really doesn't like to fold a lot uh, when he's in position. So I'm still not really a fond of a double barrel there with the 10-8, but I, I would consider it a little more if I, if I know for a fact he's only folding flops like less than 20% of the time. Lair Bart checks back. I do have an ace high here, but on a heck of a lot of runouts, I really don't think my ace high is going to be the best hand at showdown, and if it is, I get to be bluffed off it. Goes for the check back, snap raises turn. Uh, yeah, we're going to fold there. And we defend against the 3-bet with ace-jack off-suit against Mr. Bust to AFC. This is going to be a pretty good board for him to c-bet. I do want to defend with some ace-highs, but not without any backdoor draws here, at least not with ace-jack. I'm not particularly fond of a call uh, against early position with ace-jack off-suit, but, you know, against a looser player, I don't mind doing it at all. Uh, the squeeze comes out from oak, he calls. And so now we're dealing with a little bit tighter ranges here, and I think ace-jack off-suit is a fold. We're just going to get ourselves into a little bit of trouble. Check back the 8-7. There's merit to c-betting this. Um, once again, just essentially for protection uh, against two people, we're going to face a lot of overcards on the turn. It's going to be hard to continue. Uh, that being said, I don't think we really get value from worse by betting the 8-7. I got a pretty nice turn, so we have a gut shot to essentially the nuts. And looks like we're going to have the chance to get to showdown here. I think this is a good time to just check back. Uh, it's not, there, there, there isn't really any value in betting here. We're not getting called by worse than a pair of 7s, 8 kicker, and we're also not really getting better hands to fold. I threw in a 3-bet with the Queen Jack suited. I really don't mind a call there, especially against, you know, the light blue players. But we've got a, a couple of aggressive 3-betters and squeezers behind us. So I'd rather just make the isolation raise and uh, try to play with uh, Brenty over here heads up. A new player at the table, Dolores here. I'm just gonna do a quick search. Just playing a Zoom table, a tournament, and two cash tables. It's not really uh, the type of games you would see a cash game regular playing. 
but I'm I'm not gonna judge him just quite yet. We'll we'll see how he plays. If I if I ever do the search there and I see somebody's playing like one table, then yeah, sure we can we can mark him as a casual player. If somebody's playing fifty tables, sure we can mark them as a reg. But uh, there's a little bit of a gray area in between, and I'm not quite sure where this guy falls. Though now that I see he's not topping up, we're just gonna give him that tag right there. Get a dry board with the ace, king. not well, not with the ace king. I wish this was ace king. It's a king queen though, so close. Uh, I'm gonna bet here. I, I do bet fairly small, which is gonna encourage him to float. I am gonna want to double barrel on a lot of turns here. That's not actually the best one. I think the the eight is going to help him a little more than it does me. Yeah, I guess we check that eight. And unless we decide to just get crazy, fancy, optimistic here, I don't think that uh, continuing on the turn is going to be great. We get a uh, top pair with the queen kicker in the top left. That's lovely. We've got Han King, who's a weaker player in the pot. The... The pot's big enough and his stack size is small enough that we can just like really, really easily get all the money in. So I'm going to start with 5.11 here and see where this goes. I'm going to make an attempt to exploit Mr. Gotnuts over here. I think he folds a little too much blind versus blind, so we're going to raise up the king four. Uh, fails miserably, okay. Um, but I think we can very likely see bet on this board as well. There we go, we take down. Also got two pair in the top left. I'm just going to keep betting this for value. This actually gets really ugly if Oak decides to raise me at any point in the hand. Uh, that being said, I have a feeling there aren't going to be enough bluffs in his range, so I guess just an easy fold if he raises me. Uh, While I do have a strong hand here, there aren't an extraordinary amount of strong hands that he can have that I'm also ahead of. Uh, the main one is going to be ace-seven suited, which there's one combo of. Uh, there could be ace-five suited as well. I guess there's a couple combos of that. Um, and king-queen. But once again, there's just, like, we even blocked that one. There's, there's so few combos of hands that that are very strong that we're ahead of so i think betting smaller makes a lot more sense and he, he just like snap raises the river and this is easiest fold on the planet guys we're up against jack 10 or a set of sevens they're almost always uh no no real no real hundred no limit regulars uh here are really going to be raising a worst two pair there and it's really hard for him to get to the river with something that is a pure bluff unless he decides to start turning hands into bluffs. Say he has ace-10 and suddenly decides that it's not good enough to call a bet, but maybe he can raise it. Well, sure, I guess he wins the hand then, but I think that scenario is quite unlikely. We're going to call along in a couple spots here. Jack-8, completing the action in the big blind. Uh, that one is a swing and a miss, so we are going to be on the check-fold plan. And we have pocket fours in position on the 537, which is uh, not bad at all, actually. And I do actually think I'm going to lead this one out. I'm going to squeeze the queen jack. Uh, Alex Black calling in the small blind. I, I feel like that just gives me a really nice opportunity to uh, to throw in the squeeze. We'll, we'll see a lot of folds from him if Brenty does not come along. And even if Brenty does come along, uh, it's going to be tough for him to call. Get top pair. Very nice. Uh, I do know that Brenty is aggressive, so I'm actually going to check this, this flop. Uh, very nice turn. I think if he's not going to bluff the flop, though, he probably won't bluff the turn. 
So I guess we can start going for value here. I'm going to start off with half pot. Fours are facing such an absurdly small raise that I absolutely have to continue. Got a bit of $30 coming out from Got Nuts. He's essentially trying to say, you know, I've got a set here. I really don't think he has... Um, I don't think he has 6-8 in his, you know, middle position calling range and he's under the gun. The question is, do I believe him? And, uh, yeah, why not? He could, sure. And if I don't believe him, it's still hard for me to defend, to defend with the pocket fours there. Okay, so here we get to see something a little fun, or we just saw something in the top right. Uh, Dolores over here threw in the 4-bet, uh, button versus blit, big blind, and uh, he folded to the jam. I'm just going to throw down the note here uh, that he can 4-bet bluff, uh, button versus big blind. Uh, it's always good to know. So he seems to be coming out pretty aggressive so far. King 4 is very tempting to call, getting 4 to 1 in the big blind here. And I think I will be calling it, like, we, we can flop second up flush draws, which turn out to be very good draws. We have bottom pair, I've got a couple of options. I. I think I'm going to choose check, and while we do occasionally have the best hand here, I think there are plenty of pairs uh, between ace and four that Oak is going to want to check on this flop. So he's not just c-betting every single one of those, and of course they're going to be calling a turn bet. Um, Alex Black is going to have a fair amount of those pairs too. I'm happy just trying to get to showdown here. And whoops, I timed out. That's no fun. Now, I am curious, okay? I am curious, because we just found Alex Black. Maybe that was a misclick. He was calling in the small blind against middle position with 8-9 offsuit. Now, if I knew better, or if I didn't know better, I would just, you know, snap mark him as a fish, but Alex Black, I give him credit for being decent. All right, three bet with the ace king. Get the nine high board. This is going to be a great board for me. Uh, of course, you know it gets better if I have a pair. But let's throw in the c bet. Pocket jacks. I squeeze. Get called by Mister Smiles over here. I think I prefer to go for a check call on this flop. He actually does go for a very large bet, which makes me think he's going for a two-street game, which I don't think you'll see with a uh, top pair or better a lot, so I'm kind of happy about that. The ace, though, does kill a lot of our equity. That ace is quite an unfortunate card. And he even just goes like really small on the ace turn. I think jacks do become a fold now. We would likely just be uh, getting it in on, I guess, any like non-ace, non-king turn. I have the option to check raise with the 
I think I want to continue with it, but I don't want to check raise. I want to be check raising the stronger draws, um, essentially because when a lot of money goes in, 10-7, uh, even if the draw hits, is typically going to be getting the short end of the stick. We'll run into hands like Queen-10, which of course has us absolutely dominated. We'll run into flush draws. This would this would be a perfect example. If I check raise this flop, like fire out, bluff the turn, and get this river, by the time I'm throwing in the river bet, I'm not extremely happy about it. But I am going to value bet... I imagine I have to go pretty small here. His range is likely going to be pretty weak also. So go 60%. Maybe I should even go smaller than that. It's a spot where I'm not really going to be able to have too many bluffs. If he raises me, I'm not going to be thrilled about it. Uh, I think I, my hand is likely too strong to fold though. It really depends on how many draws he's going to be checking back on the turn. And it also, you know, the other factor is how often is this river going to be bluff raised when I can quite easily have a flush myself, unless he's just expecting me to raise all my flush draws. I guess we can fold it, but I'm really not happy about it. We're trying to get pocket fives to show down and get check raised by Hen King. He has very little money left behind. I would contemplate calling there, um, especially like with the backdoor flush draw, I'd contemplate calling if he had a deeper stack, but basically what's going to happen there is he's going to check raise to seven, seven, whatever he just did right there, and he's going to shove the turn, and that's really not going to make for a profitable spot for me. Fives under pair to the board once again, we were just trying to get it to show down. Uh, that option does not work out. We got an interesting little min bet coming out from Quanta Play. He gets raised up to 10, which is a pretty small raise if you think about it. And he folds, so all right, you know, note to self, min bet folds the turn. And you know, guys, when I say note to self, you can write down notes on stars. So hey, let's do that. I'm just going to write down the board texture just for fun. Oh, I thought he min bet the turn. Wait, okay, what happened here? You know, I'm going to pull this off screen. You know, we'll look into this a little further where it's not in the way of any table because uh, that, that turned out to be odd. Okay. So what ended up happening is he min bet flop out of position in a three bet, in a three bet pot. Uh, folds to about a half pot raise. I actually think that was probably even, yeah, that was definitely smaller than a half pot raise, but close enough for the note's sake. Raise blind versus blind. This is not all that great of a board for queen seven, but there's going to be a lot of turns I want to keep barreling on. I get a lot of gut shots on turns. I get a lot of flush draws on turns. So let's just throw in the bet on the flop and see where the turn takes us. Uh, Deuce is not one of those cards. And Deuce is such a card that it really, it, it doesn't change the board at all. It's not, you know, like suddenly he had an eight. Uh, the scary Deuce comes along and, you know, he wants to click the fold button. No, it's nothing like that. So I don't think I continue to bluff. I feel like this video I have been betting a lot of flops, checking a lot of turns, which, uh, yeah, I have been doing, but we've also been running into a lot of spots where I just either have no equity on a turn, or the turn is really good for the caller's range, and now 
I don't think a normal size bet is going to be extremely profitable. I think it'd be a little bit silly to go for an over bet here, and I think it would be quite transparent since I would be betting most of my turn flush draws on the turn. So I like to just check. If he bets, he's going to take it. If he just checks, let's face it, he's probably going to take it anyways. Uh, guys, I flop really, really well with the pocket eights. and get a check from this guy. Uh, no idea what he's going to be checking with. Uh, what was my note on him that I took? He can 4-bet bluff, so you know he can probably 3-bet bluff as well. I, I think this is a spot where I want to be thrown in a bet. Uh, half pot or maybe even smaller. It just doesn't seem like a, a board he's going to be check folding on. I think it'd be a little silly for him to check fold on the 877 board. But he does, so he he not a hot clue what he had there, but he takes the the passive check fold line. A little disappointed about it, but what can you do? So I don't always raise my AS10, but Alex Black is actually very loose from all positions. Uh, so I think if he's going to be loose, I can loosen up against him just a little bit. So raise up the AS10. I mean, it makes for a fine 3-bet bluff. And wow, 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 this guy loves to 3-bet blind versus blind. Do I want to do anything about it with Ace 3 Ace 3 while it does have a blocker, it is still a very, very mediocre like four bet bluffing hand this guy also doesn't like to fold the four bets he's the type of guy we like we he's very aggressive pre-flop he doesn't fold to extra aggression pre-flop so that's not really the kind of person we want to start bluffing with our ace three offsuits ace king versus the cutoff raise from spade valet we throw in the raise he folds And we see Dolores involved in another pot here, which this is this is once again a, a spot where you wouldn't really see a lot of regulars being involved. He called in the small blind and then called the squeeze. Oh, that should not be a very favorable spot for him to be in. And Bust AFC comes out with the large sizing, going to go for the two street game. And I expect we'll see a pot size shove coming quite often here. Oh, hey, we get a free big blind. Yes, please. While I do have a position, I'm not going to be raising with hands as weak as 3-7 offsuit. I'm just going to take the free flop. See if I can, you know, realize some of the equity that 3-7 is going to have. Uh, looks like this time I didn't. And guys, I think I am going to wrap it up right about here. So... I hope you guys enjoyed. This was the first video I've ever really made like this. So guys, uh, all comments, feedback, etc. are greatly appreciated. Um, just keep it constructive. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, 
thanks so much for watching. Once again, this is uh, Darius Vita, aka Komodo Dragon Jesus, for Poker VIP. And see you guys later.